Sammy from Chamber Memory Photography, and I'm here with Stephanie Audette, who is a graphic designer and brand architect. So I'm going to ask her a couple questions about rebranding, who should do it, when should they do it, and all of your burning questions. <laughs> all right, so to start, what is rebranding? Rebranding could be um, changing your corporate visual identity, so meaning your logo, your colors, your typography, but it could also mean kind of changing the personality of your brand. Mm -hmm. um, so the way you talk to people, how you communicate with people. All right, so who is somebody who should rebrand and when should they rebrand? It depends on your individual business. It's not the same across the board. There are a couple key signs to tell you that it's time to rebrand. You're attracting the wrong customers. You're not attracting enough customers. Mm -hmm. The fact that people don't understand what you do. Uh, I get that a lot of the time. People don't understand what we're selling or what we do, so they're confused on your messaging. Right. Um, those are just com some key elements. Um, okay. So, can any company rebrand? Like, I'm a photographer. I see a lot of photographers rebranding up into like restaurants. Like, does everybody rebrand at some point? Almost everybody, I would say. Um, if you Google um, Gap rebrand you'll actually see that they tried to rebrand to look more modern and people revolted against it. So they went back to their original, um, their original like blue square with the white lettering. Right. So um, when you have a strong brand already, you don't necessarily need to rebrand. It's only if you're not getting the target clients and money and et cetera. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So you want to make sure that you have a really strong, solid brand identity, which includes your logo, your color palette, your fonts and also brand messaging, which is how are you talking to people? What is your, what is the personality that's coming through? Are you serious in tone? Are you um, clever in tone? Those are some things that will set you apart from other companies and um, will make you kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. All right, so say I'm not attracting the right clientele and I reach out to you to rebrand, how long from start to finish does that kind of process take? I like to say about two months is a good buffer zone, at least for working with a freelancer like myself. If you're working with a small marketing company or a larger marketing company, their timeline may be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So what can I expect to get from it? Like a new website, new business cards maybe? Mm -hmm. um, can you walk me through that? Yeah, so there's a much larger process behind the scenes when you're rebranding or doing your new brand identity. The first thing is we do a questionnaire. So we really dig deep into who is your target client? What is your mission statement? Um, what is your why? What is your why? Yeah. Exactly. Um, from there, we do about 25 questions. We then create a mood board so I can understand visually what your right. kind of brand is. Exactly. And a mood board can consist of colors. Um, photographs, expressions, other logos, typography, so that we're on the same page before we move forward with concepts. Then we create the three to five different logo concepts, and those are fleshed out on the computer with different color palettes and fonts. Mm -hmm. um, those are presented, we refine the final logo type, then they get all of the logo files, the color palette, um, the fonts, and they also get a brand identity guide. And this is basically a PDF that shows the color codes to make sure the exact color blue right. is the same on your website. Um, how to use the logo files, what not to do. You'll sometimes see people squish their logos or stretch it. Mm -hmm. And you want to keep it the same proportions throughout. Mm -hmm. And then font files. What font should you be using for your headings or subheadings? That PDF could be given to a graphic designer, a web designer, an apparel guy or sign guy, and everybody has the same information so that your brand identity is consistent across all platforms. I do a lot of my website building myself, but I know some people outsource to you, of course, because this is your whole job. Right. So when should you hire a professional like you rather than doing it yourself? Totally. Um, if you have the budget, mm -hmm. definitely outsource. If you don't have the background in doing creating a visual brand and you don't feel comfortable with it, then definitely hire someone as well. If you, you aren't attracting the clients that you want, then it's time to hire a professional because we do a lot of background work, kind of digging in a little bit deeper 
into who are we trying to attract right and how or, or what is the best solution in doing that mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of my role is that challenge how do I visually create something that is going to pull in your ideal client which is a lot of fun all right, so tell me a little about you and your business. Okay. So my name is Stephanie Audette Connor, and I own Stephanie Audette Design LLC. I've been in business sixth year, full time in business. Um, I did work for some other design companies, and it wasn't for me. I like to be my own boss, just like you do. And um, started working with small local businesses. I really love educating them on branding, how it works, walking them through the process, and holding them through the process. Um, and then creating a solution, a visual solution, for their branding needs. I really like making um, relationships in the community, but also connecting some of my clients with other clients so that they can build their businesses as well. Okay, now that we've talked a little bit about what rebranding is, Steph is going to take a look at my website and give a couple quick tips that can apply to me, but that can also apply to you. Awesome, yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right, so we are on the website, and the first thing we see is a bunch of gorgeous images. Okay. <laughs> and that's usually the first thing that people want to see is your work, right? Because being a photographer, you want to show the actual images that you take. So your portfolio, right? Um, we have the logo on the left, the contact up here, and then all of your menu items. So again, images on top, is something that's great. Um, the one thing I see that is missing is a call to action. So usually above the fold, which means this line right here, without you scrolling is called above the fold, you want to create some type of call to action, whether that's um, see the latest wedding or contact me for pricing. So something that entices them. That could even be a pop-up where you could have someone subscribe, like view my 10 best um, wedding photography tips or something like that. Um, so that they actually maneuver or go to a different page mm -hmm. or take action in some way. Okay. The other suggestion I would have is maybe putting a little bit more space between here. So see how these are kind of on top of each other? Mm -hmm. where they're just really close. Just adding a little bit more white space underneath is going to give it a little bit more uh, what I call breathing space. Um, so people can really focus on not the typography but more of the images. Um, scrolling down, all of this looks good. You have a, nice, a lot of nice white space here, which lets the eyes breathe, as we call it. <laughs> this image is awesome because it really shows your personality. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of photographers will just see a nice pretty headshot, but your personality really shines in this, so this is great. Here's a call to action right here. Learn more about the photographer, which is great because you're the only one we're working with, right? Mm -hmm. If we were to hire you. Um, and then it looks like this is a blog post. It's her um, testimonial. Testimonial. Oh, I see. When you scroll over it. Oh, don't take my word for it. Take Leah's. This is awesome. So this is great content right here. Right? Don't take my word for it. Take Leah's. Um, so let's see. Where does this go? Oh, great. So t a testimonial page, which is awesome because you're hired off of your testimonials, I'm sure. Be Besides your portfolio is probably number one, your testimonies are number two, right, in photography. And I love that you have images of the actual people right next to it. That's really awesome. Uh, what else? The nod. So when you add any type of badge, say, for say, or per se, um, this shows that you are legit, right? It shows your credibility or it makes you more credible. So always having some type of badge, if you've won anything or part of any associations, is something that is um, really good to have as well. So here we have, it looks like all of your albums. So this looks great. Again, we can actually see who, what the album is about, which gives us a lot of great information. The other little thing you might want to think about is using a maximum of three different fonts. So here we have one, two, 
three, four, <laughs> five, maybe. <laughs> so actually keeping the fonts consistent, Definitely. like minimizing it to just three, will make your site look even more cohesive. Do you think that there is a benefit or deterrent for having like a long home page? Because I used to not have very much on there, but I recently made it a lot longer, and mm. I realized that you haven't scrolled to the bottom yet, so I wonder if there you else go. Does. Exactly. So usually, yeah, that's a pretty long one. <laughs> um, well, it's hard to say because there are websites that are literally just one page, and you scroll all the way to the bottom, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. But but what happens is they put a little tag in. So if that's if like an anchor, love, an anchor exactly. Um, if you put if you love stories, it would drag us down to that section. Mm -hmm. So this is a lot of content for your home page. The fact that I didn't scroll all the way down says something, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the three main things you want to show on your home page? Your portfolio, your offerings, possibly some testimonials, and how they can contact you, right? Um, so those are the kind of the things that I would focus on, and then you could add in all of the additional um, information. Questions here. Right. I like Target. Okay. I'm actually not that much. Okay. Um, I just deleted my note. Alright. Um, <laughs> I do feel no. 